What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. In this episode, we're going to discuss even more iOS 17.2 features and changes. We're gonna talk about the new M3 Max that are coming next week. The HomePod with a built-in screen might be closer than we think, a crazy AirTag story and more. And as always, if you wanna stay updated with everything going on in the world of Apple, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. All right, so let's start by talking about iOS 17.2 and some of the additional features and changes. So you know last week how I talked about the announced notifications feature getting smarter in 17.2 and how your phone can now basically read and scan a photo and read out what is in that photo to you even when your phone is locked via the announced notifications feature. Yeah, so last week I told you how it described a screenshot for me, but I could not get it to describe like a dog or a cat or anything like that. But now somebody on Reddit shared a video where you can hear that Siri announces what is in this photo while his phone is locked and it's through CarPlay. So it's the same feature, it's the same announced notifications feature, but it describes the image. Just listen to this. photo from Katrina with a black cat with a red ribbon around its neck sitting on a white surface. So yeah, that's pretty crazy. And I've still not been able to get this to work myself. So try it yourself on CarPlay or with your AirPods and see if you can get it to describe an image for you. Now we also have a change on the lock screen. So if I swipe down and go to my lock screen right here, you can see that we have a new wind widget. So that wind widget there has a new look to it. So it kind of looks like a compass and it shows the direction with the miles per hour in the middle. So it looks a lot better than it did on 17.1 in previous versions of iOS 17. And that, of course, is in addition to the two new home screen widgets that you see right here with weather and clock. There are some additional ones for weather as well, but these are my two favorites right there. Now, there's also a change to the Safari video UI. So if you watch YouTube videos in Safari or if you just load up, you know, videos from other websites inside of Safari, you will now see a change to the UI. So you'll see that down in the bottom right hand corner, we just have those three dots now and the AirPlay button right there has now been moved to the top left right next to where you can put it in picture in picture mode. So just a minor change there, but I did notice that that is new. Now there was also a bug in 17.1 that affected the contacts application and it would basically just take up a lot of space, like over a gigabyte in some instances, but that appears to be fixed here in 17.2 according to this user here on Reddit. Now I did also wanna talk about the journal application because I've been using the journal app quite a bit. You know, you can see kind of my journal entries there. I need to stop sharing them and showing them on here. I need to find a way to private certain ones but anyway you you can see that I have been journaling quite a bit here on iOS 17.2 and I love the application it is a little bit buggy at times but the point of me bringing this up is because a lot of people have asked me if the journal application is going to be available on the iPad and on Mac OS when 17.2 launches and it looks like that is not going to be the case and it looks like there's really no sign of it coming to iPad OS or Mac OS anytime soon which is a little bit unfortunate now I did also want to point out that that we have a new default home screen layout when you reset all content and settings with the journal application. You can see it's right there on the second page. Now, something that really just started getting a lot of attention recently for some reason is if you go into edit and then go into the markup tool here in iOS 17 and you tap on the plus right here, you will notice that the magnifier tool is gone and for some reason a lot of people are just now realizing that that was removed in ios 17. so you know yes i missed this you know it's not under shapes or anything like that you cannot do the magnifier tool anymore in markup however on apple's website and all their documentation they still show this as existing so this might just be a bug kind of a oversight on apple so we might actually see the magnifier tool return at some point i don't think it's permanently gone at least i hope not now i did also want to talk about the resident Evil Village game, which was just released earlier this week for the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, along with the M series iPads. And the reason it's limited to just those devices is because, you know, as you can see from the gameplay, it is insane. It is, the, the graphics are amazing. I mean, I've never seen graphics as good on an iPhone or iPad game. So, you know, Apple really hyped this up at the event and I think it's lived up to the hype. Although I would say that I would highly recommend using a controller for this. Use some type of controller because 
because the on-screen controls are just not that great. But it is free to start playing. However, it will cost you $15.99 to unlock the full game. And that is actually a 60% discount that runs until November 20th. So after November 20th, you're going to be paying more. I think it's like 40 bucks, you know, after that date to get the full game. So if you're interested in gaming at all, check it out. So as far as the performance and battery life on iOS 17.2 beta one, really nothing has changed since last week. I'm not going to sit here and repeat myself every single week, but performance is fine. I'm not really having any type of bugs. I'm not really having any type of crashing issues or anything like that. I have noticed some issues with my widgets, especially after a reboot They take quite a long time to populate, but they do end up coming back without having to restart my device or anything like that. And you could also see the fresh Geekbench scores on screen right now. Solid scores, you know, still not as good as 17.1 in some runs. Sometimes they are a little bit higher than 17.1, but you can't really take these Geekbench scores at face value. There's a lot more to it. But when it comes to battery life, I will say that battery life has been pretty good. I mean, it feels the same as 17.1 to me. Like I use 17.1 really not for very long, but I was using the RC version for, you know, over a week. And then right once 17.2 beta one came out, I started using that and you could see battery life is fine. I mean, again, it's not really gonna be much different different from 17.1. So you can see my last 24 hours right there and then my last 10 days right here. So I averaged nine hours and six minutes of screen active time. And really this week, I only went over 100% battery usage on one day. So you can see it's much better than last week. So I'm not sure if that's correlated with 17.2 or not, but you could see the difference there. I was still running 17.2 last week, so I don't think that would matter, but just interesting to see. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next week is going to be the week of November 6th, which is going to be a very busy week, not just for software, but also for hardware. So really get excited for next week because this week was extremely slow. This episode is also probably not going to be the greatest because there hasn't really been a lot going on. But next week, I would expect to see a new 17.2 beta. So 17.2 beta 2, I would expect next week, most likely on Tuesday the 7th. Now, also, you might remember that last week I said that we should see a 17.1.1 update at some point in November, since we're not going to get 17.2, the final release, until December. Well, now, Mac rumors came out and revealed that in their analytics, they do see some devices running 17.1.1 which means that a release is pretty close. So I would expect to see an iOS 17.1.1, honestly, as early as Monday the 6th. Now, it could come as early as then, or it could come on the week of the 13th, or I think at the very latest, it would have to be the week of the 20th. But I see 17.1.1 coming either next week or the following week. I really don't see it coming on the week of the 20th or any later than that. And of course, those double point updates are just going to be minor bug fix updates to fix up some of the bugs and security you know, vulnerabilities that are going on out there. You're not going to see any type of new features in those updates. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. And let's start with a brief recap of the Scary Fast event and what Macs are coming next week. So next week, we're going to be seeing the M3 Max. So the M3 chip, the M3 Pro chip, and the M3 Max chip. So Apple officially killed off the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the Touch Bar, and now we have a base model, an entry-level 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M3 chip, but the M3 chip is not gonna be as great of a value as it seems if you use dual displays, because you could only have one external display with the M3 MacBook Pro, and you also are limited to just two Thunderbolt ports, whereas the M3 Pro and Max models have three. And then, of course, the big issue that everybody had with this MacBook is that it comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, which yes, is pretty low, but let's be real. Everybody looks for something wrong with every new Apple product. And three months from now, four months from now, a year from now, anybody who buys this machine is not gonna care that it has eight gigs of RAM. I think most people are gonna be just fine with that. However, me personally, I'm gonna recommend to go with the M3 Pro this year. I think the M3 Pro is gonna be the best out of any of the M3 chips. And of course, if you can splurge, if you can afford it, the M3 Max is going to offer the best performance for the value. Of course, it's expensive, but I think the performance is astronomical. I mean, based on the Geekbench scores, the benchmark scores, it scores similar to the M2 Ultra chip, which is insane. And then, of course, we have the new 24-inch iMac with the M3 chip as well, just the base M3. So I'm going to be making videos on all of those next week. So expect to see a lot of videos on the Mac. So pretty much my whole channel is going to be Mac-focused for the rest of November. So just FYI. 
guy. And then speaking of new Apple products, if you buy something new from Apple starting from now through December 25th, you're gonna have until January 8th to return it. Okay, so now let's talk about that HomePod with a screen on it that we've heard for quite a while now, several years, we've heard about Apple working on a HomePod with a full-size screen on the top. And now we're hearing more about that because in the code of iOS 17.2 and tvOS 17.2, 9to5Mac found code in there that showed that the firmware of tvOS 17.2 is internally running on an iPad. And it looks like it's the iPad mini based on the code. So could we see the HomePod with the screen earlier than we expected? I think a lot of people did not expect this until like 2025, 2026. But based on this, you know, why would it be in the code if it's not coming somewhat soon? So we may actually see that at some point in 2024. And then finally, let's talk about another I'm not going to say crazy because this isn't really a crazy AirTag story, but another AirTag story. So this time, Washington DC is following what happened in New York City earlier in the year. So I covered this here on the channel as well. So they're giving out free air tags to everybody who lives in certain neighborhoods that rank high in car theft. So the mayor of DC announced this new program that's not only going to provide free air tags for residents to put in their cars, but it's also going to have the ability to have police officers there to help install the air tags and get them registered on their phones. So this is a great move to help reduce the amount of car theft, but it had me thinking, why don't we just have tracking capabilities on all cars that are built today? Like I know Tesla and a lot of the more recent EVs especially have tracking capabilities. You can track that without an AirTag, but why is that not standard on every car now? Because an AirTag, you can find it and chuck it. You can't do that with like a Tesla or anything like that. You're always gonna be able to track the location of it. And speaking of the AirTags, we did also receive a new firmware update this week, version 2.0.0. Now, this is going to be a slow rollout, and Apple has not published what's new in this update yet, so it's likely just to be bug fixes and improvements, things like that. Nothing major I wouldn't expect. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest in the world of Apple. Like I mentioned, a very, very slow week, so not a super exciting episode, but I still hope you guys enjoyed it, at least hearing the sound of my voice and bringing you guys a new video because I didn't release anything this week besides that live stream on Monday, and I feel bad about that, but there's really... That's just the icing on top. Like I was saying, there was really just nothing going on. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. Also, check out the Opulent Wallpaper Pack if you want to. That is linked down in the description below. That was the wallpaper I was using for today's video. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.